Here are the results. Randy Delory, 23.1%, 1,270 points. Labby Casulis, 36.79%, 0.79% of the vote, 2,023 points. Ian Rankin, 40.11% of the vote, 2,206 points. No candidate has received more than the required 2,751 points. So we will now go to a second count of the ballots. Randy Delory has received the fewest number of points. He is eliminated and his votes will be redistributed to the two remaining candidates. The new leader of the Nova Scotia Liberal Party, and our next Premier of Nova Scotia is Ian Rankin. I'm deeply honored this evening to be Nova Scotia's 29th Premier. I want to use this platform to say that although I was chosen by Liberals, I will be a Premier for every Nova Scotian. And every Nova Scotian has a role in building our future. Whether you're a union member or a business owner, whether you live in downtown Halifax or in a rural community, whether you work in an office on the land or on the sea, or if you work or are a student or are retired, I'll be calling on your skills, your experience and your expertise to guide our decisions. This past year has been tough. With every heartbreak, there was an additional sadness of un being unable to reach out to a loved one or hug someone in sympathy or even honor a life well lived by attending a funeral. But the spirit of Nova Scotians rose to every challenge when the best contribution we could make was to stay home. We stayed the Blazes home. We created a Facebook, Facebook group called Nova Scotia Kitchen Party that brought our music throughout the world. Remember that businesses voluntarily shut their businesses down early on in the pandemic. And every day Nova Scotians performed hundreds, if not thousands, of acts of kindness, like getting their neighbors groceries, giving their neighbors a call to loved ones, and finding ways to reach out to others. And it is in that spirit that gives me confidence that Nova Scotia will emerge from this crisis stronger than ever. We've learned some important things over the past difficult months, and some of them need our immediate attention and investment. The pandemic further highlights the disparities that exist in our province, for which we have a duty to correct. And we have just begun the long-awaited journey of dismantling systemic racism. It will take difficult conversations to reverse those historic and current injustices but we owe it to every Nova Scotian. The world is changing. When car manufacturers are starting to move beyond just having gas and diesel powered engines, when the largest financial organizations are moving their investments to companies that put environmental progress at the center of their company, Nova Scotia has the opportunity to seize this moment an opportunity to create jobs in every part of the province. When technology allows a job in Halifax to be performed in Mabu or Matagan, when our population is growing and growing younger, we will support local entrepreneurs leading the way in advancing world-changing research and ensure the sustainability of traditional sectors for our economy for future generations. The challenges of COVID, including the emergent variances, 
and our vaccine distribution will be the primary focus over the next, next weeks and months ahead. And while we manage those challenges, the opportunity of shaping an inclusive, low carbon economy can be planned at the same time. And I entered this race with an ambitious agenda to grasp that opportunity. Well, it's a, I don't know, it's a monumental moment for me and my family. I, it's, a, it's been a long campaign, uh, nearly half a year since we started this, and uh, it's a lot. It's a lot to take in. Uh, I'm used to winning campaigns, uh, two of them myself and seven uh, that my father won, but uh, this one means a lot. It's a monumental task, and, uh, and I'm up for it, but it's, uh, you know, it, it's an emotional moment. No, we've had positive uh, reaction through every part of the province, which I think was our strength. Um, lots of support within the caucus that uh, that have worked very hard. Lots of support from different communities. So I, I, uh, I thought we were going to win, and we did. Were you surprised it was as close as it was? Uh, I mean, our our numbers, our, our work. Uh, I think we had a team that worked really hard, and uh, I thought we were going to win. I didn't know if it was going to be the first or second ballot, and. Uh, you know, it's uh, work, hard work pays off, and I and I I think it's because of the team. We, they've worked really hard for me, and uh, they they really believe in the vision and where they think that uh, our party needs to go, and where our government needs to go, and where we should be moving next for for the next uh, uh, into the 2020s in the policy that I've brought forward in the race. Mr. Rankin, what do you think the message is from rank and file uh, liberals that they've chosen? I think you're the second youngest uh, premier. Or, I think it's the time for the next chapter, and, and obviously younger people want to see action in a number of files that I spoke to, uh, but the Liberal Party has always uh, been a pragmatic party and uh, one that uh, really valued uh, social progress. Uh, we've demonstrated that we are the strongest fiscal managers in the province, and uh, building on the progress we made, we were, we were strong leading into this pandemic, and I've articulated a vision of where we can go next. I think that uh, Liberals by and large and Nova Scotians want to see us going down the path that I presented. Were you the most different from Stephen McNeil of the three when you look at the policy? I think that Steve McNeil has done a tremendous job. He's, he's shown more political courage than any Premier in our history. Uh, I, like I said, I've served alongside of him for my entire career in politics. I've learned from the Premier. Um, he's, he's stood up to uh, special interest groups and we've managed to, to, to look out for all Nova Scotians. That's going to continue under my watch. Uh, but this is about what the next generation and what people want to see next. They want to see action on climate change. They want to see us continuing down the path of righting historic wrongs. He believes in those things too. And I'm just proposing that we start taking those steps forward together. And the party, I think, by and large, uh, wants to see action in those areas.